News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, users? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And in today's video tutorial, I'm going to go over the latest updates to the Hoverbox widgets found at MuseForYouShop.com. Uh, so this is a major update. It's much easier to use, and now you don't have to crop images first to place them into the Hoverbox. Um, it works more like adding an image to a rectangle in Adobe Muse where you can uh, scale to fill, scale to fit, or leave the image at its original size. Um, so it's a lot of fun, and I'm going to go over the updates in this video tutorial. Uh, so this is just one example of one of the hover boxes at museforyoushop.com. Uh, there's a total of 18 now, I believe. Um, if we go to museforyoushop.com, and we'll click on subscribe today, and right here in the category, uh, we have the different categories. You can click on hover box, and here are the different hover boxes that have been updated. So there's 18 in total here, um, and they all have the new feature where you can uh, scale to fill, scale to fit, or leave the image at its original size. Um, so I'll go over all the updates that have been added. Um, I have a PDF here, and I'll read all the updates. So the updates are a uh, fixed issue with widget not resizing correctly in the latest version of Adobe Muse 2018. Uh, so if you were working with it in the latest version, uh, you'd find if you resized the widget container, uh, the image wouldn't correctly fit inside the widget container. And the second one here, fixed issue with links being activated if two or more hover boxes with the same instance number were on the same page. So if you had, let's say, uh, a link disabled for the first hover box and you added a second one, um, the links would be enabled. So that has been fixed. Um, and then the third one here, image no longer needs to be cropped to be placed in the widget. You can now use the image fitting option within the widget. The fourth one, image can now be scaled to fill, scaled to fit, or kept at its original size within the image fitting option. The fifth one, if image is kept at its original size, it can be rep repositioned within the widget options. So you can focus in on a particular section of the image. If the image is really large, um, you can use the image position option to focus in on a certain section of the image. And I'll go over all of these updates in this video tutorial. Uh, removed minimum width and maximum width options. This option is no longer needed as you can set the responsive options for the hover box at different breakpoints. Uh, so rather than having to set a minimum width or maximum width, um, you can just, you know, if you didn't want the hover box to resize at a certain breakpoint or, yeah, at a certain width within the browser, uh, you could just add a breakpoint and set the responsive option to none for the hover box. And the seventh update here is the ability to change the font size for the hover box at a specific breakpoint. Um, so if you did want the font for the hover boxes to be smaller, let's say on tablet and mobile devices, uh, you could change the M value for the hover box and it would change the font size uh, at that specific breakpoint. So these are the hover boxes that have been updated. So the diagonal slide hover box, the double panel hover box, crosshair hover box, center circle hover box, the side text hover box panel reveal, the circle border, text border, hover reveal social card, um, the 180 text reveal, the text reveal testimonial uh, hover box, the zoom hover box, the cinematic, the smooth text reveal, the vertical panel, the diagonal flip, and the social media profile card. So if you did purchase individually, you can download the new update by going to the email that was first sent when you purchased the widget and uh, just click download again and it'll download the latest update. If you don't see that email, just let me know and I'll resend that email with the download link. If you purchased the subscription, you can download the latest updates uh, right from the subscription. Uh, so I'll go ahead and get started on showing the new updates. So I'll work with one hover box. I'll work with the Zoom hover box widget. Um, so when you first download the widget, you just extract the zip file and then double click on the .mulib file and it will install directly into the library panel. If you don't see the library panel, you can go to window and click on library. Okay, so here I'm gonna type in uh, Zoom, and here we have the Zoom Hoverbox widget. So here I'm going to click, hold, and drag and place onto my Adobe Muse website. And this is what the Hoverbox looks like initially. There's no image. We just have the text that appears within the Hoverbox. Um, so here I'll add an image. So I'll open the widget options. I'll click Add File, and I'll add an image here. 
Okay, so just like that, we have an image. If I were to preview in the browser and I hover, we have that zoom effect over the hover box. Um, so now let's say I wanted to resize the widget or the image and the entire hover box. I could just simply drag out the widget container just like I would a rectangle and the image scales to fill within the hover box and we have a larger hover box. So it's just that simple. It works like rectangles and it has the same effect. I could do that with any hover box. So if I decided to use the 180 uh, text reveal hover box, you just click, hold and drag, place right in there. And the same thing, just add an image and resize the widget container. And just like that, we have the hover box. Perfect. I could even say stretch the browser width. Yeah, so I can choose all the resize options. I could say responsive width, responsive width and height, or stretch the browser width. With the 180, it's kind of a large distance for it to reveal. So it's kind of a, an interesting effect there. Probably wouldn't use stretch the browser width for the 180. Um, but if I were to bring in the zoom hover box widget and just make it a little bit larger, something like this, stretch the browser width and add file and I'll preview and there we go looks good so now I'll go over the different um, image fitting options so you can scale to fill scale to fit or original size similar to filling a rectangle within Adobe Muse where you can scale to fill scale to fit or original size if I were to say original size the image just stays at its original size and I can reposition the x and y coordinates of the image um, the x and y coordinates don't work with scale to fill or scale to fit uh, because it is using as much of the image as it possibly can to fit that widget container but at original size i can kind of play with it if the image is larger than the widget container and we can see the image kind of moves different sections of the image move so just think of an x and y coordinate, um, the image being on an x and y coordinate, 100 and 100 would be all the way to the bottom right, 0, 0 would be all the way to the top left, and 50, 50 would be the center of the image. So let's say I wanted to get more of her face um, there, I'd, I'd set the y position to 20, and it just kind of moves the image up a bit. I could try 10, and there we go, we have that part of the image. So it's interesting if you have large images, you can focus the hover box at a particular section of the image. So it makes it really easy to get the exact placement of where you want the image to be. Um, the rest of the options here, like image alternative text for screen readers that don't show images, you can add alternative text so the user knows what the image is about. Um, the link, you can add a link uh, to the hover box. Um, you can just click enable link and then enter the link here in the link option. And here we have linking more info at the bottom of the widget so you can see how to link uh, to, to internal pages, uh, the home page, external pages, and anchor points. So internal pages is dot backslash page name dot HTML. So for example, if the page name is about us, the link would be dot backslash about us dot HTML. The home page is always dot backslash index dot HTML, linking to internal pages, HTTP, and then the URL. And then linking to anchor points is the hashtag and the name of the anchor. Um, and make sure the anchor name is always lowercase. All right, so that's linking. And you'll also notice that within the image, there's no uh, minimum width or maximum width anymore uh, because you can literally just change the, the size of the, the hover box at a different breakpoint. So if I were to add a breakpoint, I could just resize the breakpoint and set the responsive options on this breakpoint. So it makes it really easy to kind of work with. Um, I couldn't change the image fitting. If I were to change the image fitting here, um, it would change for all the breakpoints. I'm actually going to change it to scale to fill here so we can see the entire image. And there we go. So on the largest breakpoint, it's going to be stretched to browser width. And then on the smallest breakpoint, it just changes there. So it makes it really easy to work with. So yeah, just like rectangles in Adobe Muse, you can just resize the widget um, on different breakpoints and set the resize options on different breakpoints. Um, so if I wanted this to be responsive width on the 600 breakpoint, you could just select responsive width and the widget would be responsive and width on the 600 breakpoint. Or I could say responsive width and height. And it becomes responsive and width and height. Perfect. 
So let's take a look at the rest of the widget options. Um, the rest are all the same. Um, you know, gradient, this hover box has a gradient, um, the effect speed as well, and the title. You can set the titles, the different titles here. Um, and then we have this new option here called breakpoint. So here you can change the M value at a specific breakpoint. So initially the M value equals 16 pixels, um, and then the M value can be changed at a specific breakpoint within the widget options. Um, so let's say at the 600 breakpoint, um, I want the M value to be uh, 10. So now, because the titles, they're using the M value for the font size, because the M value is lower or equals 10 at the 600 breakpoint, the font size for all the titles will get smaller because they're all using that M value. And M is just kind of a, a value that you can use for websites. I'm not gonna go too, too much into detail about the different measurement units, there are great articles online uh, that talk about M values and how they're used within websites. Um, so for now, you just have to know basically, you know, changing the, the M value at a specific breakpoint and then what value uh, you want that M to equal in pixels um, there. And it is referenced here within the widget options. All right, so now I'll go ahead and preview. And as we can see at this breakpoint, the text is larger and when I get to this breakpoint, the text becomes smaller. So just like that, for you know, for tablet and mobile uh, devices, you can make the text smaller. There. All right, looks good. So I think I've went, I've gone over all the widget options. Um, you can do, you know, responsive width and height for the widget, uh, the hover boxes as well. So I'll just delete this breakpoint. And if I wanted it to be responsive in width and height, just set it to responsive in width and height here within the resize option and I'll preview and just like that it becomes responsive and width and height and we can see that text becomes smaller at the 600 breakpoint all right looks good so the other thing I'll show is adding multiple hover boxes so I can copy and paste this hover box and if the instance numbers are the same they'll have the same colors if you wanted different colors for the text or the different colors within the hover box uh, you'd want to change the instance number right up here. Also, if you had some hover boxes that had a link enabled and some that didn't have a link enabled, you'd want to change the instance number as well. So let's say for instance, uh, we have enable link checked. So we have it checked for both of these and I'll go ahead and preview in the browser. So if I click, we notice in the URL, the it goes to that specific anchor because uh, that's what's in the link option. Or I can actually change it here to uh, to a website and yeah I'll do it for both of these just add a link in there and I'll, I'll go ahead and preview if I click it goes to that link so for both of them so let's say one uh, hover box had the link disabled so if I uncheck enable link now remember they both have the same instance number so if I were to preview and I click now neither of them go to the to the link. So one had it enabled and this one done, didn't have it enabled. So if you do have multiple hover boxes with the same instance number, you want to make sure that they have the same uh, link property here. So either it's enabled or disabled. Um, if you did want different properties for, for the link, just change the instance number right up here. So I've changed it, changed it to instance number two. So now if I preview, this first one will go to museforyoushop.com and the second one doesn't have a link because we disabled it, but they both have different instance numbers. Um, so it's just one thing to note. So if the hover boxes have different link properties or different color properties, you'll want to give each of them a unique instance number. Also, if you have different hover boxes on the page, uh, like let's say you have the zoom hover box and the 180 text reveal hover box, you want to give each of those hover boxes a unique instance number. Um, so that's basically it. I'll just read what I've written here in the reference. Uh, so 1EM equals 16 pixels. M value can be changed at a specific breakpoint within the widget options. Uh, each new hover box with different styling requires a unique instance number. For the scale on hover option in the effects section, anything greater than 1 will make the image larger, zoom in, and anything less than 1 will make the image smaller, zoom out. So this pertains just to the 180 text reveal hover box widget. Um, and to change the font type for the text, select the widget and then go to the built-in Adobe Muse text option in the upper toolbar. From here, you can select any web font from the fonts menu. So here I can click on the widget and I can just change the font to 
to something like this using the uh, built-in text option in Adobe Muse. And just like that, we see that the text has changed for the hover box. All right, so I'll preview. And just like that, we have those hover boxes. All right, so that's it for the updates. Uh, the biggest thing is that you no longer have to crop the images in order to place them in the hover box. You can make the widget container any size and then just fill the hover box with an image and you're good to go. And yeah, we have the different image fitting options and you can set the resize option for the widget uh, using the resize here, setting it to none, responsive width, responsive width and height, and stretch to browser width. So that's it for this video tutorial. I'll just quickly read the updates one more time. Uh, so fixed issue with the widget not resizing correctly in the latest version of Adobe Muse 2018. Fixed issue with links being activated. If two or more hover boxes with the same instance number were on the same page, image no longer needs to be cropped to be placed in widget. You can now use the image fitting option within the widget. Image can now be scaled to fill, scaled to fit, or kept at its original size within the image fitting option. If image is kept at its original size, it can be repositioned within the widget options. Uh, removed minimum width and maximum width options. Uh, this option is no longer needed as you can set the responsive options for the hover box at different breakpoints. And there's the ability to change the font size for the hover box at a specific breakpoint. And all these hover boxes have been updated. Looks good. So to gain access to the Hoverbox widgets, you can go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click on subscribe today. Here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Uh, the Hoverboxes, I'll click on the Hoverbox category. Uh, we have different Hoverboxes here. Um, in this tutorial, I worked with the Zoom Hoverbox quite a bit. Uh, so you can click on uh, any of the widgets and here you can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for 39 a year. Here are the features included, a few of the widget options. Uh, the change log here goes over all the updates I went over in this video tutorial. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and the links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. News for you, awesome websites without code.